following on from episode 75, where I showed you I was halfway through discharging all these uh, recycled e-bike batteries. I've finished all that. I haven't pulled this block apart because the voltages on those were also so good. Um, it appears that that whole chunk is in good condition. So I'm going to leave it like that until I really work out what kind of connection system I'm going to employ for re uh, reconnecting these into groups. Um, but in the meantime, uh, I've got all this data for 62 cells, so I thought I would feed those into a spreadsheet, of course, and um, see what pretty graphs I can make. And here we are. I fed all those numbers into Google Spreadsheets and I have sorted the capacity from highest to lowest down there. The worst was um, 3,338 milliamp hours. These are nominally 5,000 milliamp hour cells when they were new, uh, according to the label. And it's nice that two of them are still above their um, rated capacity. That's quite nice, and these are pretty pretty close as well. And the worst ones are pretty bad. So, moving on, this over here is a histogram of the uh, different capacities. So it's all those numbers sliced up into buckets of 100 milliamp hours. So you can see I've got quite a few that are around the 4,300 milliamp hours, and I've got another hump here around the 4,700 milliamp hours. So the interesting thing there is that these cells have come from three different e-bikes and what I am guessing is that this hump here represents one of the e-bike packs that was not as old and thrashed as these ones here. I'm guessing that either one cell went terribly bad and then the BMS shut it all down and the rest of the cells were all fine or perhaps the BMS itself died and so the, the owner got rid of the pack. Uh, either way I'm quite happy to have their cells so I'm guessing that the this hump here is the other two packs which have had a, a longer life in an actual e-bike. So that's, that's mildly interesting and then there's some outliers way down here. And then moving over to the internal resistance, this is a bit more of a classic slanted bell curve. This terrible outlier over here is a single cell that has quite high internal resistance. The, the other thing that this tells me is that most of the cells are below 50 milliohms internal resistance. So, and quite a few around the high mid-twenties. So that's kind of interesting because uh, prior prior to this I didn't really have much of a handle on where the internal resistances might lie and how, how they spread. Um, they're more likely to be on the lower side than the higher side, which is nice. Then looking over at the voltages that I measured before I did any of the testing, before charging and discharging, this is what I measured after disassembling the, the battery packs. This is a more complicated story and I don't know that you can actually read much into that at all except that they're between 3.3 and 3.4 they're all over the place. They're actually all in a fairly narrow band and but it is, it is all one thing that's interesting, which is the nominal voltage for these cells is 3.2 volts. And so these are all pretty good. None of them were flat. None of them were below 3.2, except perhaps for the ones that were puffy, which I threw out immediately. I didn't actually measure one, and it had a voltage of 3.3 uh, something. So it was, the voltage was fine, but it was puffy, and that kind of freaked me out. So... I, I threw it out. So that's the voltages and then this is a correlation between internal resistance and capacity. And so what I was looking for here is to see if there's any validity to the notion that 
the higher the internal resistance, the lower the capacity, which kind of makes sense logic-wise. Um, you'd think that if the cell has a whole lot of internal resistance, that it would it would um, wear out faster. But apart from this outlier here, most of them are pretty well clustered in between 4,000 and 5,000 milliamp hours. And um, there's not a very strong correlation. This line here is the trend line for all these data points. And it's been pulled down mostly by this one here. If I removed that, then it would almost be a flat line. Um, so what that suggests is that for this collection of cells, at least internal resistance is not significant for getting a feel for capacity. Basically, I'm, I have to measure the capacity to measure the capacity. I can't just quickly measure the internal resistance and hope that um, that will give me a clue about the capacity. I'm not seeing any clear um, picture from that um, in terms of correlation. That's it for now for graphs. Oh, and before I go, uh, I just wanted to show you this uh, joiner is effectively what it is. It's a single-sided PCB with um, routed slots in it that you use to join um, in parallel a bunch of these pouch cells. Um, and my current thinking is I'll join four together, four cells together in parallel, then a string of seven uh, to make a smallish 24 volt pack and then I'll repeat that for as many cells as I as I can find. Um, but I do have a request. Do you know where I can get these? I got these from uh, my old e-bike boss but he doesn't know where he got them um, and I've been searching online all over the place and I can't seem to find um, a good source of these. So if you do know, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.